Hi, and welcome to Just Painted. I'm Christina Watts, a multimedia artist in Prince George, BC, and today we're going to paint with epoxy and produce a wonderful glass looking piece of artwork like this. So let's get started. To make that painting behind us, we're going to need a resin. I like art resin because it is safe to use inside, it has a non-yellowing UV protectant in it, and it stays open for a little bit. I've used a few different resins and I find that this one is a nice, consistent resin. It comes in two parts, a hardener and the resin itself. You have to mix them one and one together for a considerable amount of time, and then from there you can add pigments to it and create uh, little buckets of paint. Before I proceed to mix, I'm going to add gloves onto my hands and just know that uh, whatever surface that you touch with epoxy is going to be completely destroyed. So consider that when you're using different materials, your clothes, uh, your tables that you put it on, any of your surroundings. Um, if it can get on it, it will. And just be wise about your work surface. So we're going to add this hardener into the resin and we're going to mix. We're going to mix for two minutes. Uh, you need to mix, sometimes I tell people mix it for two songs. It's important because if you don't mix this well enough, again, it won't set. There's so many things that can happen with resin that won't make it set. So make sure that you take all the right steps to get you to that finished product. And, and just know that if you wind up with a kind of a hard but sticky surface, that's not the end of the world. You can save it. It requires mixing another batch of clear resin and pouring it over the top. And while I mix this up for two minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the surfaces. So epoxy can go on a multitude of surfaces. You can even put it on canvas, but the canvas tends to sag in certain spots and epoxy is a self-leveling agent. So I like to use a hard and firm surface. These wooden panel boards over here are just perfect. The one thing that you need to do is pre-prep them with a gesso or primer paint. This can be even used as your background in your art piece. In the large piece that I have behind me here, I had pre-painted the entire wood panel board with white. And so the glimpses that you see through in the sky are the white background of the board. Another great thing about the wood panel boards is if you don't want to use this side of the surface, you can use the inside of the surface. Just put maybe a bead of acrylic um, sealant around the corner so that the epoxy doesn't seep through and you're good to go. Now I'm going to take my resin medium. Uh, if I wanted a clean, clear surface, I would use this straight up, put it right on top of my picture or canvas um, to seal it. But I'm going to actually mix pigments in and make a paint with it. So I'm going to pour it into some other little cups that I have. Also a 16 ounce kit will get you about eight square feet. Uh, I kind of know from working with this how much I need just by looking at it. But um, for you at home, if you're wondering how much resin do I need to cover my surface, what you want to do is you just want to sort of take your canvas size and do the math on it, knowing that the kit that you have will do so much square, uh, square inches or square feet of surface. And now I'm going to start mixing some pigments right in. So I'm going to use the snow cap to make a nice frothy white. There we go. The gloves don't always help when you try to open your paints, so you might want to open them prior. I'm going to add about six drops, seven drops to one of them. And again, probably looking for three or four or five drops, depending on, on how you want your piece to look. Nice and opaque. I think for this one, we're going to add a darker blue. Now with these acrylic ink bottles, make sure you mix them up because the pigments like to settle on the bottom. So always just kind of come by, mix them up. This has more of a pigment load, so be just a, less drops of the acrylic ink than you used of the alcohol ink. It doesn't take much more to mix those up. You want to use a different stir stick for each one, otherwise you're your paints will get tainted in with the other ones, especially your white. You don't want to put the blue in the white and then you don't even have a white left anymore. I'm going with a horizontal look, right? My sky and my waves. So I am just running this through horizontally. 
Well, once we're done this and we've pushed the paint around, I don't use brushes with this because it will destroy brushes. So what I use is cardboard or stick or something else because that's something that I'm not worried about throwing in the garbage after the fact. And I just love, I just love the painting process. There's just something so human about creating something. And time just stands so still when you're making it. And I find especially to, in today's world when we're running around so much to just take a, take a little bit to have fun and to do something interesting and slow that clock down for just a little bit makes all the difference in the world to your health and um, I think to your, your well-being. So here's my piece of cardboard and all I'm going to do is run it up and down sideways and just manipulate those paints that I put on and I'm trying to be careful about not mixing the blues into my white. Now comes my favorite part, the torch. I use the torch with other projects. Um, but this is a simple one. So this is a little art resin torch. You just simply turn it on and you push the dial in. And if you have it just right, it will start up. There we go. Wasn't pushing hard enough. So what's happening now is this is degassing. This is getting rid of all my bubbles. Now there are some projects that you would like to keep your bubbles in. And if that's the case, don't torch. Um, but what this is doing is getting rid of all those frothy looking bubbles getting straight to that glass clear surface in a quick, efficient way. This feels good. Just be careful not to burn your tape off the side. And when you're done, you simply slide the nozzle over and crank it to shut. Okay, so we were all excited about the torch that we used for two minutes. And now we have our background done. I'm gonna show you layer number two, but what we have to do now with this piece is we have to cover it so that we don't have any dust or hair that fall into it while it's hardening because that's really frustrating to come back and see a big hair stuck in your piece. Um, another good reason to have the torch, you can actually blast the hair off, but um, sometimes the dust is, is not very nice. So cover it, put it away for 24 hours, it'll harden, and then you can come back and do this next step. Okay, after 24 hours, your piece will have hardened. I just wanna let you know that this isn't the same piece. This is um, a similar one that I did, however, um, I put some more white up here that was straight up out of the pigments and bottles. And for you pores out there looking to get your cells, you can do it with resin as well. Now we're going to look at doing the next layer, which is the mountains. And if you were here in person, you would see that these mountains are actually lifted up off the back layer and they come forward as well as some of the ocean in the front and the, the frothiness of the white. You really have to see a piece like this in person to appreciate the levels that are in here. So we're gonna go back to our piece. We're gonna put in some mountains and then we're gonna add a little bit of base for some more ocean and then we'll let that one harden. So because this epoxy is extremely difficult to control, we're just going to kind of do a free pour using a stick just to manipulate it enough. You don't want a thick layer because like I said, if you put a lot on, it's gonna self level into a blob. So you wanna be careful how much you put onto your next layer. Now I've uh, mixed in some indigo into this batch here, same process as last time. And starting about a third of the way down, because rule of thirds, you wanna start a third for your mountains. And I'm just going to run a bit of a line up with just using my stick here. I'm, um, liking maybe the possibility of reflections of these mountains down below. So I'm simply using the side of my stick and running some ripples in. These may or may not stay. So um, I'm being very careful to not use a lot of epoxy when doing this because it will self-level and it won't stay, right? You people that out there that have any questions about your painting, you know, feel free to look me up and, and find me and ask me because I'm always happy to help. There we go. So I like I like how this is looking. 
And um, I will hit it with a torch to get the bubbles out when I'm done the next step, which is um, I want a little bit of white froth in the center, so, or in the waves here. So I've mixed up again a snow cap into my resin. And I am just going to add a few blobs in here that I will manipulate again with my stick. So it's, it's a back and forth thing, you know, does it look good? What can you change about it? Get in, get out. Because if you're thinking, oh, just that one part, I'm just gonna get that one part out. It's that part that you're gonna go into and then you're gonna mess around with it too much. It's gonna wreck your piece. So be warned, get in, get out with this stuff. Got my torch. Just gonna very carefully degas all of those bubbles just so that I have a nice clear surface. Except, uh, you know, you might want to leave some bubbles in the, the waves, that's kind of a neat thing. Ooh. That's how you take care of a fire. Oh, you might want to have an extinguisher on hand just in case. And that is done. Okay, so to finish this piece off, we will let the surface harden for 24 hours. And once it has done that, you can safely take your tape off. If it doesn't come all the way off in some spots, take some sanding paper and sand it off. Feel free to polish the edges again, sand the corners if you like, if they're really rigid and um, put your hanging gear on the back. So I hope you enjoyed that segment of painting with epoxy. Have an artful day. Mm -hmm.